uh, I indulge myself a little bit with what we've done in, in our business. Um, we acquired this business in 1997, and uh, what, what we set out to do was to uh, deliver a, um, uh, an R&D, a research and development uh, based company, which would deliver solutions for, for um, agriculture and food. Um, we see uh, huge opportunities in, in uh, the agricultural industry throughout the world, and similar to what Dan said earlier, uh, we, we would have expanded over the years through uh, um, going to other countries, uh, partnering with uh, uh, potential customers, and uh, then um, working with those customers in, in those countries. Uh, we, we base our business on, on four pillars. Uh, we call them the four I's. Uh, that we're innovative, we're international, we're independent, and we, we do what we know to be right. We uh, have integrity in, in all we do. Uh, we're privately owned, and, and that allows us to apply the innovation in uh, the manner that uh, will um, give the greatest uh, um, returns to uh, ourselves and our customers. Um, what we do is we combine science, technology, and innovation to address the challenges facing the global food uh, supply or value chain. And we're part of that uh, value chain, uh, which is a, uh, but just a small part of it, but we feel we can, we can influence it. Um, and uh, uh, we will unequivocally put partnership, service, and doing the right thing at, uh, at the heart of our business. And as I say, you know, an Irishman coming to Argentina, or an, uh, an Argentinian coming to Ireland, uh, what, what you, you know or what you learn in your own country will not apply or does not apply in, in the country you go to visit. So, but you can bring knowledge and transfer that there. And I suppose the most important thing for us now is we, we, we do embrace our responsibility to invest in health, well-being, and, and safety and sustainability. And the health uh, agenda is very, very key for us uh, as being part of that uh, supply chain. So, in terms of smart agriculture and the, the food value chain challenge, and the food value chain challenge, you know, if, if I wanted to put it in, in crude terms or in very simple terms, the um, question that, that will um, come to mind is, will we leave the earth in at least as good a state as we receive it while feeding that increased population? So, while um, Gustavo and, and, and Fernando have spoken about what uh, smart agriculture is. Uh, I'm going to have a quick look at some of the technologies that we see uh, coming down the, the coming in front of us, some of the technologies we are using, and the fact that this challenge is what's been left in front of us. So, in terms of smart agriculture uh, and, and smart climate, uh, what what can we do? How can we? Uh, how can we meet those challenges and at the exact same time deliver on, uh, on a, a sustainable, sustainably intensive uh, production or supply chain. If we look at, at uh, um, farming's environmental performance, it has, uh, there's no doubt, been declining. Uh, it's still in decline, but it's, it, there's, in some cases we see modest improvements. So things like um, biological water quality uh, in rivers in, in England, have just maintained while production has increased, but we're still having an impact that we need to uh, reverse and, and mitigate. Um, uh, farm and financial performance, I don't think any farmer, uh, every farmer would love to have these three um, graphs, and they do have them built in, in their heads, in that the, there's a long-term decline in, in numbers, uh, and, but farmers are always entrepreneurs. And uh, you know, it, it surprised me when I hear some of the figures that and uh, some of the figures and, and barriers that have been uh, presented to Argentinian farmers in the recent past, and they still are very resilient. And that resilience is a, is a key strength going forward. Uh, so, ca can we can we meet the challenge? Can we? Are there technologies out there uh, that that can turn the environment from a cost center to a profit center? And this is a, a, a graph uh, showing that there are wins. And if you, if you take uh, this part of the graph. These are actually, these are actually um, uh, cost benefits uh, without our improvements in the environment that can actually add to the profitability of the farm, uh, whereas these are more significant, are, 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 are structural and, and may, may actually 
uh, add, or will actually add costs. So there are opportunities, and, and understanding the economics uh, of positive behaviour uh, is very, very important and very valuable. The economic impact, you know, of some of the stuff, and, and, and uh, uh, Dan and some of the other e economists here uh, today uh, would certainly comment on it, but we spoke at, at lunchtime around the changes that have occurred since um, uh, President Macri has come in place and, and the, proposed, the proposals in terms of the uh, changes in export uh, taxes. Uh, th those, those singular events can have very significant economic effects. One of them that I would in my life never have considered was the environmental controls and demands that the Chinese government have put on the pig farmers. Uh, not alone had an effect on European pork prices, it has had a significant effect on Chinese inflation. So farming in one region and, and the impact of the environmental controls and, and closing farms because of the, the environmental damage that has been done. You know, five years ago or ten years ago, if somebody said that the Chinese would take the environment um, seriously and they would impact and take that, it's very, very, it, it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a sea change, but it's had a very significant effect. Antibiotic use. Today, I just picked this, this headline out of the agricultural media. Uh, the G20 agricultural ministers have committed to sustainable agriculture and antibiotic resistance. So in terms of that, when G20 are standing up and saying we must have a sustainable future, then that's where we're going to have to use smart agriculture to achieve that and attain that. And I have no doubt we'll do it. Antibiotic use, uh, much of animal production in the past and up until recently has been based on low cost, non-value creation. Uh, and, and, and therefore, small uh, singular issues have tended to drive uh, aspects of the agricultural uh, production, and that uh, and, and has impacts on on food. So you know, if, if you look at um, uh, Fernando's uh, curve or graph, where there was a significant uh, um, increase in yields, a significant increase in, in uh, intensive agriculture in, in the 50s, uh, in the 1950s, that then. You know, up until that time, we had, we had we didn't have access to convenience foods. We now have access to convenience foods. Um, I walked down the street in, in Buenos Aires, and most people were eating McDonald's or pizza. Uh, I don't think that that, or I assume that that isn't the traditional Argentinian dish, uh, but it's the same dish as being consumed in Ireland and in most other countries now. And what's the impact on on, on us and on our health for that? And we know that. Um, we know that um, while um, historically we would say manu malnutrition is an issue for uh, you know people who have not enough food, malnutrition is also an issue for someone like me who has too much food. <laughs> so, so uh, instead of poor people uh, and uh, uh, undernourished people being malnourished, there are probably 60% of the uh, of, of the world now or malnourished, but malnourished in a different way. So that's the sort of thing we see. And if we take antibiotic use, we now see also antibiotic resistance is a very significant uh, issue. 700,000 people a year die because of antibiotic resistance. 700,000 people. We don't, you know, if that was uh, a, 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 a war, we'd be up in arms. So we've got to take that and take it forward. And that will require structural change. So the production processes that we use, the, um, the, the, the investment uh, in, in, in structures and in, in processes, in housing, will have to change to capture all the opportunity. All, all, not, this isn't an opportunity, this is now a requirement for us. So in terms of, of, of can these things technically be achieved, yes. For instance, here are two pilot studies which show that by lowering um, greenhouse emissions, uh, you can actually improve the profitability of farms. 10,000 on an on a extensive beef farm, uh, 200 pounds or 300 dollars uh, uh, per cow on a, on a 200 cow farm. Um, if, again, it's always important to remember your audience, if I was presenting this in Europe, I would present this on the basis that um, uh, technology, this is technology we've developed which will lower the use of soil. But because I'm in Argentina, I'm saying that you get 30% better uh, um, efficiency from using uh, from using uh, this technology with soil, but that's this is all we have to do. We have to produce more from this and produce it more more sustainable. Um, there was uh, um, 
uh, <coughs> Fernando uh, referred to the um, use of, of big data. Um, now we see Google uh, and uh, Microsoft uh, and, and making a real play around developing algorithms uh, to analyze uh, the, 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 um, the utilization of the data, to analyze the data that's been gathered. If you can't measure, you can't improve. And that has been one of the most significant issues in agriculture. We would, we would uh, take averages, and excuse my uh, use of the vernacular, but an average uh, as a scientist is when you put your feet in the refrigerator and your head uh, in the fire, on average, the other part of you is all right. <laughs> and that is, that is where we will get huge, huge uh, benefits and, and bonuses uh, and, and, and uh, improvements in efficiencies and utilization in the um, in agriculture because we need to measure, we need to make uh, real decisions based on real data. Um, an interesting piece uh, of, of technology that's been used in Ireland uh, is uh, what we call LiDAR technology. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a laser and, ra and, uh, uh, and radar um, technology. It, it can measure um, the uh, sequestration of, of uh, carbon and it can uh, then based on, on, on that you can plan put in fast growing trees which would help you, uh, deliver uh, significant uh, uh, sequestration and, and removal of, of greenhouse glass gases and make a really significant impact again on that because we, when you take this is again good measurement and, and real measurement uh, in terms of, of water the other interesting thing, and I know that Argentina has very good water resources, but 80% of water uh, phosphate enters water catches by overland flow. And that tends to happen uh, during 5% of, of, of weather events. Now, so that's extreme rainfall events. So it's flooding, it's, it's things like that. What, what, what Chagas have now done, Ch uh, these are the, um, the uh, extension um, part, Division of, of uh, the Department of Agriculture in Ireland. They have now developed using uh, LIDAR as well, uh, analyzing, um, analyzing the, system, the, the land and then predicting where uh, you can uh, again plant trees to, cap to, to minimize that, that flow of capture. So these are all technologies that have the potential to have very significant impact uh, in terms of environment. Uh, so I suppose the, the, the take-home message uh, on, on this piece for me is that you know delivering profitable and environmentally sound farming, the technology is available or becoming available. Big data analysis and utilization and predictions are, are going to be really significant. The healthy food debate for, for us is, is another really, really uh, important aspect. As I said, proactive intervention is key. Uh, Earlier in the value chain, the better, because it has. Uh, then you're taking a far more holistic opinion or um, a view, and, and you can influence it on a far more significant basis. Um, as, as Fernando spoke earlier, we can now and and um, <coughs> we can now impact earlier to give uh, and deliver real nutrition and real health to uh, to people and to the consumer. Um, uh, and and and. Farmers and, and all people in the, in the uh, food value chain have the potential to become health, health professionals because it's, it's far more important to be proactive about your health than to be reactive. And, and much of, of the health um, budgets around the world are spent on reaction rather than proactive. Um, the other interesting aspect, I suppose, and it's just something I want to refer to, is, is the changes in consumer behavior. So online uh, shopping, online uh, grocery shopping, and, and a recent German, uh, just a, um, uh, I, I was at a lecture recently with a, where a German professor spoke, and it was just a toe in the water um, analysis he did where he asked all his, his um, students where they bought their groceries, and none of them bought any groceries in, in stores, they all bought online. So there's a real significant change. Social media, where is social media going to come? Is somebody in Ireland going to say, um, I want to see where the soya, uh, is the soya grown on Guillermo's farm uh, that ultimately fed the, the chickens that, that, um, that are, are on the table? That's the sort of, uh, we don't know where this is going to go. 
Um, and then just to refer to one thing, um, uh, one part, and, 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 and acknowledge what uh, our, own our own country has done. And you will have heard of Origin Green. Uh, Origin <coughs> Green has been uh, hugely significant. I, I, I travel quite a bit around the world. And everywhere I go, people say, you know, how did you do it? Why are you doing this? You know, how, what, what sort of engagement? And, and again, I suppose it's, it's, it's uh, I spoke to, um, to Joyce earlier today and we talked about three pillars of, of, of what uh, the Irish government do. One would be the Department of Foreign Affairs, who have us here. They really do uh, box above their weight. Uh, they, they provide us uh, with huge opportunities to engage uh, as, as Irish people in other markets too and, and see what can be evolved and developed. Uh, Board Bia also. Board Bia developed Origin Green, which is a wonderful, wonderful branding uh, of all things Irish. And I spoke to a number of people today about Kerry Gold and the brands that surround that, uh, and, that uh, and that have been a brand recognised throughout the world from Ireland. But Origin Green has been huge, and Enterprise Ireland also, I'd like to mention, because again, they, when, when we compare, when we go to, to other countries, those three um, Institutions or, or, or uh, groups really do support everything we do. And Origin Green has been hugely positive. It has uh, put real responsibility on the Irish producers, the Irish processors, and, and the industry in general to, to deliver uh, sustainable uh, agricultural, sustainable intensification. And, to, uh, and, and again, it's, it's very worthwhile. So I suppose the future, as I say, uh, the, the initial brief was climate smart. Uh, I think it's not just climate smart, it's health smart and it's population smart. Uh, we have to be smart about what we do. Uh, we have to be courageous uh, in taking on the challenges and not willing to just simply say what happened before will happen in the future. So thank you very much.